I'm here with Dr. Mordechai Kedar, world expert on Hamas. What is Hamas? What does that name mean? Hamas is initials of Harakat al Mukamam al Islamia, means the Islamic resistant movement. The, the name Palestine doesn't even appear in the name because, from their point of view, they are fighting for Islam, for the religion, before they are fighting for Palestine. And don't forget that Palestine's borders were marked not by the Palestinians, not by Arabs, not by Muslims. They were marked by the French and the British infidels. So they de definitely do not recognize the borders, just like ISIS, which erased the border between Syria and Iraq because those borders were also marked by France and uh, Britain. European colonialism. However, at the same time, I see in the charter of Hamas, the Islamic resistance movement is uniquely Palestinian and it wants to fly the banner of Allah over all of Palestine. Well, definitely, their, their arena is against us, against the Danes. They're not fighting against Americans yet. They don't fight against the Europeans yet. After they will finish with a close enemy, they will continue to the further enemy. They are part of the Muslim Brotherhood organizations in the world. And their go goals are global, to spread Islam all over the world. They will do the job in this part of the world, others will do it in other parts, and together they will establish the caliphate in the end of the struggle against the infidels. That's why we call it Hamas in your backyard, exactly that, because it's coming to your backyard. So is Hamas just about liberation, or is it really anti-Semitic? Is it anti-Jewish? Does it have a problem with Jews per se? A perusal of the Hamas charter seems to indicate that there's a problem with Jews themselves. And to understand that a little bit better, uh, I'm in studio today with Dr. Mordechai Kedar, who's an expert, world expert on Islamic radicalism. Is that a fair statement that they have a problem with Jews per se, Hamas? Well, if you read the covenant, you can very easily see how many verses of the Quran which talk about the Jews, not about the Israelis. Those days there was no state of Israel. They are talking about Jews and how the Islam should treat the Jews and what the Prophet Muhammad said about the Jews. So it was all from the 7th century and the 8th century from the Hadith, the Islamic, the oral tradition. So I saw a lot of mention of Freemasons and that Jews control everything in the world and money and media and communism and they put a lot of isms and they put the Jews as in charge of all these things. It's really like a classic. They quote the protocols of the elders of Zion. Means this is where, where they take the concepts about Jews in the modern world who controlled everything. Do they believe it really? Is that, is that what an average yeah. Hamas of soldier course. believes? Of course. You know, the protocols had so many translations to Arabic and not only to Persian, to Turkic, to all kinds all kind of Islamic languages. And this is one of the big, biggest bestsellers in the Arab and the Islamic world, the protocols, because it proves how Jews control the whole mm. world. Here's the hadith that's quoted uh, inside the Hamas charter. The judgment day will not come until Muslims fight the Jews and kill them, until Jew hides behind the rocks and trees, and then the rocks and trees will say, O oh Muslim, O oh servant of Allah, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill me. Except for one tree, the Arkad, because this tree belongs to the Jews and he will not cooperate with the Muslims. Okay. This is the continuation of this thing. Look, for them, for their point of view, not only human beings should fight the Jews, also the nature, also rocks, also trees fights against the Jews. This is the, the view according to this, to this hadith. And the struggle against the Jews didn't start since the state of Israel started. It started since Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, hated the Jews that he, he said that they are, the, the wrath of Allah rests on them, the first chapter of the Quran. Jews are prophet killers, this is what they took from Christianity. Um, Jews are descendants of, sw of swines and apes. And this whole from the Quran. Not from uh, uh, today's newspapers. So a Jew is basically inhuman. He's some kind of vermin. He's some kind of he's a son of pig and monkeys. He's, he's something to be eradicated if they don't live according to the Islamic rules. Right. Because according to Islam, since they had a book and they're not idol worshippers, just like Christians, they can live under the auspice of Islam. Under humiliation, they should pay the jizya from their hand. Well, they are humiliated, and this is what states in the Quran. Said in the Quran, and. Uh, they cannot ride the horse, only a donkey, in order to denigrate them. And all kinds of other restrictions, especially to walk in the sewage, in the sewage canal in the street. And you know, those days, they, they didn't have sewage under the ground. Right. So everything which comes out from, from the households 
was running in the streets. October 7th comes right out of this stuff. The inhumane murder of Jews, babies, etc. Because all these are soldiers. A baby will grow up to be a soldier. A, a, a girl will grow up to be a soldier's mother. A, a grandmother is a grandmother of a soldier. So all the Israelis are soldiers by definition. This is why their, their blood is you know, permitted for, for, for Muslims to shed it. I'm trying to understand the Hamas Charter. I'm trying to understand, in this instance, the question of global support for Hamas, Islamic support for Hamas from around the world. And it actually says it right here in the Hamas Charter. It says the problem of the liberation of Palestine has three spheres, the Palestinian, the Pan-Arab, and the Islamic, and each has a role to play in the struggle. I'm in studio with uh, Dr. Mordechai Kedar, who is a world expert on radical Islam. Explain to me these three spheres. How do they work together? Well, these three spheres are the battlefield for Hamas and also where they, where they should find the supporters. In the Palestinian arena, uh, there are other organizations which are not Islamic. Mm -hmm. The Front, the PLO, who the connection with Islam is suspicious. There are also Israeli Arabs who are also part of the Palestinian people, as they claim, and they are Israeli citizens, and it is not easy to recruit them to the fight or to the jihad against Israel. So this is the, the, the uh, uh, challenges within the uh, uh, Palestinian arena. On the Arab arena, there are other challenges. There are some Arab states which already made peace with Israel. And in 1988, when it was written, Egypt has already done, made, made peace with Israel. Uh, five years later, uh, Jordan will join the peace. So uh, they actually understood that they, the Arab world, although there are many who support them, yet there are some problems which they have to deal with as a part of their struggle in order to defeat Israel and to topple Israel and to get rid of Israel altogether. Another problem on another arena is the Islamic world. In the Islamic world, there are also some challenges. Turkey made peace with Israel. So uh, they have, uh, on one side, supporters like Iran since 1979 in the Islamic world, and other problems like Turkey, which has relations with Israel. So they definitely have to work in all these three spheres, and this is why they uh, talk about this. Uh, I had Richard Kemp uh, on recently, and he says to me, that one of the main goals of Hamas right now is to actually cause the world to detach from Israel and uh, to cause uh, the international community and in places like Harvard uh, or, uh, or Cornell or Columbia to detach itself from Israel. And that's one of the spheres that they're operating in. Is that what they're talking about when they talk about the three spheres? This is the, no, this is the fourth one, the international. Mm -hmm. the, the, the sphere of the infidels. Christians and other countries which are not Islamic. Western Europe, United States, Canada, Australia. These countries are a problem because they are supporting the only democracy in the Middle East, the state of Israel. And now we have to recruit them. How do you do it? You show Israel as a country which violates human rights mm -hmm. because this is the name of the game in these countries. So show how Israel uh, destroys houses on the, on the Palestinians. Exaggerate with the number of casualties uh, and uh, show that Israel vilify Israel in the eyes of those of those uh, Westerners who know nothing about the real goals of his, of, of uh, Hamas, which is to take the whole world over through the sister organizations, which will work on each and every one of the arenas in the world as the Muslim Brotherhood want. Now we can uh, work on how to vilify Israel and use, uh, I would say, even useful idiots who will assault. Israel only because of what Israel is doing to the poor Palestinians, which have been used as human shields by Hamas. So three Muslim spheres, one international sphere, using the useful idiots or the uh, the, the the liberal progressive world, the European world that that would they don't be. Don't get it. They just don't get it. They just don't understand it, and use them all to weaken Israel uh, with the eventual goal of destroying it. And the main supporter, Qatar, actually recruited Al Jazeera day and night. For the last month, they show nothing else. Only what happens in Gaza. Why? Because a, a, a Hamas state in Gaza is a project of the Qataris. The Qataris sponsored it with the, like a billion and a half dollar. They, they actually were behind it, as they were behind Morsi in Egypt. Everywhere in the world where there's a chance to put the Muslim Brotherhood in the government, the Qataris are there to support it. Uh, tools at the disposal of the jihad against Israel. 
from the international community to Qatar to uh, inside Israel and uh, the Palestinian movements. Dr. Mordechai Kedar, thanks for elucidating.